This next question, Jim, sent to Courtney Drive Through at gmail.com from Jeremy Bevan or Beaven, Madison, Indiana. Wait a minute, Beaven? Wasn't he the guy who used to team up with Butthead? B E A V I N. I said Bevan and then I said Beaven. It's Beaven, right? Beaven. I don't know. It's whatever he wants it to be. I have heard you talk a lot about some of the OVW guys that WWE misused, uh, such as the Bashams. Oh, there you go. Most of the Spirit Squad, etc. But it seems I have only heard you mention Rob Conway in passing. The Artful Dodger has talked about him and basically says that Rob has his own ideas that weren't good and that he didn't work with what WWE gave him. I have had the privilege of being in the same locker room with Rob Conway at events over the years, and I've found him to be a very good guy. He is always giving the younger guys advice, which always sounds good. I have never heard him pitch anything silly. His work in the ring always looks very good. Yeah. His run with the NWA belt seemed to really have brought some relevance back to that name as well. So what are your thoughts on Rob Conway, his WWE time, and his time as a vet on the Indies. Well, I think probably the only reason that I don't talk about how they fucked Conway up is because compared to the other guys, at least he he got somewhat of a run. He was, and I, part of it had to be, you know, being Sylvain Grenier's babysitter because, <laughs> you know, I mean, that was another thing. I know because he's French Canadian, and Pat had recommended him, and but sly as they called him i i didn't have any problem with him but he wasn't real good when he came in and other guys had to carry him but because he was the one that was particularly blessed by pat and sent here by the office and etc they took care of him better when in actuality you know he was the weak sister on the team but i don't they didn't fuck rob over as bad as they did the other guys especially the bashams rob was there for quite a while he had um, the tag team title, he was involved in shit. I didn't watch every single bit of it. So I don't know if they, you know, they may have fucking buried him on the air in some cases. I don't know. But the point is they used him better than they used some of these guys. Poor Dinsmore. And I know he loved the Eugene gimmick. And I know that it was hot for a while, but he was doomed because that, that kind of gimmick, especially since they didn't work it right, they didn't know how to work it. He did, but they didn't. Once you start outsmarting the fucking idiot, then he's dead. The only reason that Rain Man as, res as a wrestler worked was because he was outsmarting the people that were supposedly smart. Then when he became just another flunky, meh. And then how do you come back from that? I've mentioned before, we used to be able to... <laughs> we'd, we'd run Nick Dinsmore's high school, a show once a year, where he actually not only graduated, but was at one time an assistant teacher. And Nick Dinsmore would draw 500 people. We got Eugene off national TV, and he drew 250. Because we, we couldn't advertise Nick... You know, fucking Nick Dinsmore, your friend. And we also... The fucking school didn't want this goddamn guy that spelled his name with a backwards E and waved like a <laughs> blithering nincompoop. Is, oh, yeah, he used to be an assistant teacher over here. It th So, uh, point is, yes, Rob Conway was a very valuable guy and great talent. I don't know what's up Bruce's ass, except that he... <laughs> every time somebody didn't want to do some stupid shit that they wanted them to do, they said, well, they had bad ideas. I don't recall Rob having... It. Rob liked Shawn Michaels. Rob's epitome of a wrestler was not Ric Flair with Shawn Michaels. That's the only screwy thing that I ever, you know, fucking can remember about him as far as wrestling. But no, he'd be like goddamn Luthez compared to the crowd today. Bruce just... Whenever... They give somebody, as we've seen with Terry Taylor and the Red Rooster, he still won't come off of. Whenever they give somebody a stupid gimmick, it doesn't work, and people laugh at it. Bruce will say, well, they didn't embrace it right, or they didn't give it everything they had, or whatever the case. It can't be just, well, this was a stupid thing we told this guy to do. <clears throat> but Conway was very good. He was always helpful. The Iron Man Rob Conway at OVW with that sinister glove that could be loaded and used for a variety of purposes. Um. You know, he, you could always count on him if you needed three minutes or 30, and it didn't matter. It was always going to be good. He stayed in shape. 
So, uh, yeah. Remember, you know, they had him on Raw once. They gave him like a new song. It was like, just look at me. It was just this ridiculous song, and he came out to it. And I think it was one of those Legends nights where they had like every single legend in the ring in front of the fans kick the shit out of Rob Conway. Well, I'm sure they did. Yeah. And see, that's the thing is, it's just, it, it it's never going to change because this is the way they do things. But they don't get a wrestler that for whatever reason has talent and people kind of like him and he can work and he can talk a bit and there's something there. They don't get that wrestler and then flesh him out. Let him get more experience. Let him get more comfortable with himself and magnify the things about the guy that you like to begin with, that you that caught your attention to begin with, that you wanted to use and bring along to begin with and magnify those things. They find a guy that they like and they say, okay, come over here. Now, here's your name. Here's how you're going to dress. Here's what your fucking gimmick is. Change everything. Do this. Fuck you. Get a guy that does that already, because that's not what I do. So that's where, and it's not going to change. That's what they've been doing. That's what they're going to continue to do. And that's why guys are miserable at work there, and that's why nobody gets over anymore. And that's why that, you know, I hate the fucking comedy writers, because they're acting like this is a television show they're casting, and because they're fucking idiots and they don't know what wrestling is. And the only people that know what wrestling is these days are afraid to tell them because they're afraid that they won't continue to have a fucking job because they don't want to do wrestling and they don't want to hear about it. They want to continue doing stupid shit that fewer and fewer people watch instead of doing wrestling. So it's a vicious circle you see here. Well, you know, Jim, come to think of it, there have been so many wrestlers from OVW that have been misused, given bad gimmicks, their careers ruined, left wrestling. So many of them, you would think they could easily get together. And class maybe, action. Class action. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that's right, because there were so many promising athletes that could have had multi-million dollar careers in professional wrestling if it wasn't for the fact that the comedy writers, just like modern day times today, back in the OVW days, didn't know how to pick talent. If there was only somebody that we could think of that could gather all those names of those promising wrestlers' careers that were ruined by the evil empire of the WWE, get them together in a class action suit and sue the publicly traded company known as World Wrestling Entertainment for sabotage of gimmicks. Who could do that? Who, I say? Call Stephen P. Of the rest. Well, it ain't Leor, but it'll do for now. Folks, that's right. If indeed you need to sue, call Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. In addition to the class action suits involving cancerous talcum powder and defective earplugs from 3M that have damaged the ear, the hearing of our service members, those things are starting to go to trial, folks, and we're going to have some news on that upcoming very soon also the cancer causing agents left in the ground by chemical companies and miners also all the other people the downtrodden groups that stephen p knew has helped represented gotten justice for and more importantly judgments for we've talked about it for years on the program he is the real deal you know some people even thought he was fictitious just all made up and then they found out that Stephen P. New is a real, live, legal lion that will hop on you in a court of law. And I'll tell you something about Stephen. If you want to hop on him, it's a whole lot easier to hop on than it is to hop off. And also, what? In a, that's a lot. That's that's a that's an old baby face line. You want to hop on me, son? It's a whole lot easier to hop on than it is to hop off. You can draw your own conclusions. But anyway, besides that, Stephen is sponsoring. 
The big all-star wrestling event in Beckley, West Virginia at the Raleigh County Armory this August, the Bash in Beckley. And we're going to have more news on that uh, upcoming as the summer goes on. Jerry the King Lawler is going to be there, a whole bunch of people at the former home of Smoky Mountain Wrestling in Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, the Raleigh County Armory, the scene of some of my greatest lawsuits, folks. But Stephen P. New and newlawoffice.com, 8886. As a matter of fact, call this number. If you want tickets to Bash and Beckley, or if you have someone in your family that needs legal representation, 888-692-8084, he can fix you up for anything. Stephen P. New, get even with Stephen.